back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. I'm here with Jeff Frick. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. We're here at Knowledge. ServiceNow is a big customer event, about 4,000 people. We've been going wall to wall all day today. We had about 14 or 15 interviews today. We got, we're at it again tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big customer day. Uh, we heard from some customers today. We heard from Lennox and a couple of others, but, but tomorrow is really the big customer day. We had Eli Lilly on today. But, but tomorrow we've probably got six or seven customers coming on. Very excited about that. And then Thursday, a couple more. So, Jeff, I, I feel like by the end of this week, we are going to sound like broken records. I mean, the pattern is very clear here. IT is being managed today uh, with a, a collection of spreadsheets, legacy tools, uh, you know, gut feels, uh, very inefficiently, and you know, service now, drop it in, and things change. I mean, we're hearing that consistently. It's the cobbler's children syndrome, IT is not being managed like a business. When you drop service now and it is, good things start to happen, the perception of IT changes. Companies spend so much on IT, it seems like sort of a no-brainer that if you can improve the efficiency with which you manage, by which you manage IT, it's going to drive efficiencies in your business. Um, sounds good. Yeah, and it's, it's really an exciting time, I think, because what, what we're finding is that in the past, maybe the cobbler's kid had no shoes and didn't get the time, and then we had this whole rise of the shadow IT movement because people just put their head in the sand and IT no longer had a captive audience within their own, within their own organizations to deliver infrastructure. But it sounds like with ServiceNow and, and, and some of the more progressive CIOs are really saying, hey, this is a new world. We've got to live in this world. We've got to embrace the cloud. We've got to embrace services. We've got to embrace delivering IT really as a, as a to customers in our organizations because we have to compete with Amazon and a credit card. And now we've got the tools to really take a transformative position and, and take advantage of the best of what we've seen kind of in these last couple waves of technology in, in, in the hyperscale, in the cloud, in, in the integration, in the rise of the developer. You know, we barely talked about the community of, of people building third party apps on top of this stuff. And you know, they've rolled out their new app development um, tool. So it, it does sound like there is a path for progressive CIOs to kind of get on the get on the program if they so choose. So this is the segment, you know, when we do our intro and our and our and our summary of the day, we try we try to sort of go through, okay, what do we hear? How did the messaging from the company who's hosting the show match with what the customers are telling us? Uh, I think ServiceNow gets very high marks, but we also like to use this segment to say, look, these are some concerns we have about the company, and I'm, it's hard to come up with <laughs> a list of those concerns. Yeah. My biggest concern is can they keep growing as fast as they're growing? Um, with Frank Slootman at the top, I, I have no doubt that they, they can. I mean, the, this company doesn't make money, and their philosophy, Frank's philosophy, is to put the money into growth of the organization. There's so much upside. They're underpenetrated in the global 2000. They're underpenetrated overseas. He's going to keep throwing gasoline in the fire and really try to take this thing you know, to, to, to the moon. I think, I guess, I guess if I had to look at some concerns, I think that the, I think in a way, there, there's, there's another opportunity, uh, which is the whole value equation. I think that the, the value that their customers are getting out of this is, is so blocking and tackling, it's so basic. I think there's a, a much greater, so maybe that's, you know, maybe when they hit a billion, that's the next wave, is how to really affect you know, value throughout the organization, not just value within IT. I think indirectly, ServiceNow is, is, is affecting business value outside of IT, but the real nut is within IT. Yeah. And I, but I think there's so much more upside there, especially as they start to expand their platform into new areas. And I just think this notion of the, uh, the value that IT brings to the business is so enormous, so much greater than you know, a, a couple of points on TCO. Yeah, and as you said, there's still so much uh, turf out there that you have to be conquered. I mean, they definitely had some very large customers on the panel earlier today, but when we were out last night, you know, we were talking to a lot of retailers and, and companies that you wouldn't think of as having a really large IT organization that are here kicking the tires and deciding whether to move forward with this, which I thought was pretty interesting. So it's a huge opportunity. On the financials, we're going to have the CFO on later this week and maybe the net net at the bottom line is, has brackets on it, but if you look at the top line growth on the revenue side and you look at the top line gross margins and it's a public company, so you guys can all jump out and, 
check the 10Q and the, and the 10K. It's phenomenal numbers. And of course, the other one that you brought up earlier tonight, which I think is really the bellwether numbers, you know, what's the customer retention? Because if you've got a land and expand strategy, the only way you can successfully execute that is to really deliver a happy customer. And I think, um, it sounds like they're doing that well, and, and you know, got, it, it sounds like they got a great team put together. The fact that that uh, there's a uh, gentleman from Sequoia stayed on board, you know, didn't didn't leave post IPO. Doug Leone, Doug yeah. Doug Leone, he wants to stay and, and uh, participate in the ride. It's a good signal. Yeah. So I mean, I guess the other the other I guess the other concern would be competition, right? You're going to see this. So they ServiceNow has laid out the playbook, so you're going to get people mimicking them. And then we heard from Fred Luddy, great. I hope that happens, that'll make us better because new people will come in with new innovative ideas and that'll make us you know, to, you know, run faster and, and you know, let's see, maybe they can right, beat us, right. but you know, our challenge is to stay ahead of those guys so they welcome the competition. Um, it's just, it's a great story. I mean, yeah. I think they're in a you know, tremendous position right now. And, and as you say that, I think the other challenge that always, that always occurs with a fast growing company, right, is can they maintain the culture? I mean, Frank is a pretty unique guy and, and there, there's a, definitely a spirit here. There's a consistency in the culture that you see, but as more and more and more uh, employees come in that you know, weren't part of the founding team and they continue to expand their base, you know, can they really keep that, that kind of uh, well, yeah. solid pursuit and of customer satisfaction? And I think what they did is that, so ServiceNow had some slight reorganization of its sales force to focus on you know, sort of new logos versus ex existing accounts, and I think they did that to sharpen focus, and, and I think they're trying to be preemptive to try to be able to maintain that growth. You know, they're, they're, they're guiding, I think, 60% growth uh, in the coming quarter off a quarter where they did 80% growth. So I think the, the, the other concern I guess I would have is that they're starting to lay down some, some quarters that are going to be very tough compares. So mm -hmm. they have to keep penetrating into that global 2000. They have to keep expanding the platform horizontally. They have to expand overseas. But you know, that's all execution, and, and Frank has you know, consistently demonstrated as, as a business leader, Frank Slootman that is, that his organizations can execute, and they seem to have the resources, they've got the cash, you know, it's not unlimited. I mean, again, a big, big whale comes in, you know, they could, they could somewhat disrupt the market, but I, I don't, don't see that. I think that these guys can move faster, and, and you know, maybe there's some startups popping up every now and then, but these guys are getting embedded and I think events like this are just going to continue to expand the, the brand. Yeah, and, and it's funny, all the events we've been in, we've still got a, a lot of our summer tour yeah. still to go, but you know, kind of core IT folks are not, they're not viewed as sexy in terms of new market opportunities. It is an underserved class. You know, there's a lot of talk about big data and big data scientists and uh, cloud infrastructure, but really in terms of working with the folks on the ground that are making things happen and getting stuff done, just kind of interesting that that was the underserved market that they decided to build an application to deliver this platform. I think, again, the other kind of potential threat is as all these different SaaS applications are delivered into the enterprise and they all come in on a different entry point, on a different beach, um, at what point does their expansion start to bump into one another? And that's something that you know time will tell, but I think there's clearly enough opportunity today that that uh, they got a lot of a lot of great revenue opportunity in front of them. Yeah, and I, I think we didn't get into this today, but we will tomorrow. The whole you know is ServiceNow a, a platform as a service? Is it a software as a service? How does it relate to other platforms as services, uh, particularly Salesforce? Uh, I, I sensed is from from one of the guests. Uh, actually, it was Marina. I think it was Marina. Oh no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Marina. It was uh, the woman from Lennox. You know, we'll talk about Salesforce. Right, oh, maybe we right. shouldn't talk about that. Carolyn. So, so maybe there's Carolyn. Maybe there's a, a collision course there coming down the road. But there's such different animals right now. But as these worlds gr grow, as these companies grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger, naturally they're going to be uh, running into adjacent marketplaces. So that's something that's going to be very interesting to see. But I think that what's unique about ServiceNow is they're solving. Somebody said it was that they got a toothache, right? right, they right. Come to me. They got a toothache. Ah, oh, Doc, I, I need some help. And IT has a toothache, and that toothache is everybody's pointing fingers at IT. Oh, what am I getting for my money? Uh, you're not responding to my requests fast enough. You always say, I can't do it, so I'm going to end run you with, with, uh, with shadow IT. This whole notion of making IT heroes and going from no to now, is just, it's great messaging, but the fact that it's so many customers are telling us, well, yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. is uh, I think a great testimony to what ServiceNow is doing. So, yeah. so we're excited to be here. Uh, Jeff, any closing thoughts? Yeah, I was just going to say, just you know, back to Frank's keynote. You know, 
trying to take and, and enabling uh, the CIO to be you know, no longer an infrastructure operator, his words, but really a business partner to the rest of the business. And, and you know, all departments want to be partners with the business, but it's, it's, you know, it's kind of business 101, you know, outsource to best of breed providers for those things that aren't your core business and put your time and assets into things uh, where you can make a difference. So you, why are you managing data centers if that's not your core business? Why are you doing bits and pieces that aren't? Let's enable you to really focus on delivering business value to your customer and, and push off some of these, these non-core activities. It's a good story. Yeah, and I think that, I, get, I think we are, Jeff, ent entering the age of sort of the modern SaaS. I mean, Salesforce, to their credit, popularized it, but, but it's taken a long time for other really prominent high growth companies to, uh, to emerge. There are examples, but you know, you were involved in the early days of the application service provider, and what the application service provider was doing was taking, cobbling together a bunch of legacy systems and, and renting them. Right, right. And, and, and that's not transformational. What, tr what is, the reason why Salesforce you know, transformed is because it took a whole new, you know, built for the web, built for the cloud approach. Right. That's why Workday is doing so well, that's why ServiceNow is doing so well, and that is transformational. Yeah, and clearly, the, the, those apps have been around long enough now where people are comfortable with the infrastructure, they're comfortable with uptime, they're comfortable with security, and some of those kind of core uh, inhibitors to adoption back in the early days, and you're talking you know, back in the days 98, 99, you know, those are now gone, and the technology has progressed enough, and the uh, skills have progressed enough, and, and, and let's face it, the infrastructure com computational horsepower with really fast internets, really great browsers, really terrific CPUs, big memory devices. I mean, we're all carrying around these unbelievable devices in our pocket, which again, that even just the core infrastructure really wasn't there 12 years ago. So it's, it's all seems to really be coming together right about now, and that's why it is a very exciting time to be in this business, um, because we are really at an age of transformation. So uh, tomorrow, uh, we, we kick off, uh, again, the, uh, our colleagues are going to be at Sapphire now, John Furrier, Jeff uh, Kelly, and David Floyer are down there uh, with our team. We've got a big team down there as well. In the morning, East Coast time, we'll be broadcasting on the main SiliconANGLE channel, Sapphire Now, we've got a bunch of great guests coming on, so definitely check that out. Uh, uh, you can tweet John Furrier, at Furrier, and uh, he'll get your questions on there. And then we'll be picking up the coverage here. Uh, we start tomorrow at 9.30 Pacific time. Jeff Frick and I will be here. He's at Jeff Frick, I'm at Di Vellante. We'll be uh, kicking off with our introductory analysis. Uh, and, and then we get right into it. Um, let's see, so we've got a number of really great guests tomorrow. So let's see, let me just go to Wednesday here. Sorry, I was on the wrong day. So we start at, uh, at 9.30. And then Fred Luddy is coming back and we're going to we're going to talk to Fred about the journey uh, that's, that is service now. We're going to go back to the beginning days. You know, Fred is he's really humble. He's like super smart alpha geek uh, and somebody who can see the future and he's you know, not afraid of the competition, which we found out today. But he's going to tell us the story of service now. It's really an amazing story. Uh, and then we've got a number of folks from service now coming in, you know, some folks that uh, do some of the, the operations and some of the architecture stuff. And then it's back to customers. We've got Maritz. We got CareWorks, we got FICO coming on tomorrow, uh, we've got Yale University coming on tomorrow, and just numerous customers um, that uh, will be on the event. We got Beth White, who's the CMO of ServiceNow. Uh, she helped build up uh, Data Domain, which is a blockbuster acquisition by EMC, so we're dying to see, you know, hear from her and, and see what's happening with, uh, with this conference. So, big, big day uh, tomorrow. Uh, Mike Scarpelli is also coming on. He's the CFO of ServiceNow, we're going to ask him you know, all the questions, take the financial angle. So, so great day tomorrow, Jeff, really looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be great. And uh, Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so, so keep an eye on this channel. So we'll be picking up the coverage 9.30 Pacific. Uh, go to Sapphire or go to the siliconangle.com for coverage of Sapphire tomorrow. Check out wikibon.org for all the research uh, and uh, siliconangle.com, the, the, the blog, and check out the widget on the right-hand side. And that is the, uh, the action for this week for all the, the, the live video shows that we're doing. Uh, we will have a presence at Google I.O. and uh, so, so check out that as well. So keep watching everybody, thanks very much, really appreciate it. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick and we'll see you tomorrow.